Don't be a boob. For more videos like this one, please subscribe to this channel. Diana Rossini, Diana, what more can you tell us about the Titans' plans going forward? Well, right now, at this point, what we know is that the Tennessee Titans facility has been shut down through Saturday. Saturday afternoon is when they'll be allowed back inside the building. But that's just for right now. This is all happening this morning. It's kind of moving pretty fast at this point. So here's what we know as of now. The Titans will proceed as they per as they prepare for their game against the Steelers. They were hosting Pittsburgh on Sunday. No word on whether or not that game has been decided on. I was told that the league is currently discussing what they want to do. So we know that the Titans are going to prepare for that game virtually. No coaches, players, members of the staff, can they cannot be at that facility until Saturday. So everything is going to be over Zoom and their virtual meetings that they we saw them do during the offseason. Now, guys, you may remember back before their game against Minnesota, outside linebackers coach Shane Bowen tested positive for COVID. He did not travel with the team to Minnesota over the weekend. So these are this is a new batch of tests. And just to make sure that we're being really clear here, because we've seen in the past a lot of tests come back as a negative positive. These tests all came back as positive. There's no going back. These all came back as positive for COVID with these three players and five members of the Tennessee Titans staff. But as of right now, I'm told the league is discussing to see how they're going to move on with this and whether or not this game will be played on Sunday. All right, Diana Rossini, thank you so much for that update. We appreciate it. These people were interacting with with the Tennessee organization and also in Minnesota when they were there on Sunday. Now, the good news for Minnesota at this point right now is they did test negative for COVID-19. There were no positive tests. That test was taken yesterday, right? So they get the results today. They were tested again today, so we'll know more tomorrow. So they're not out of the, the you know, out of the clear just yet or in the clear just yet. Uh, but good news so far for Minnesota, but they were told that they also need to leave the facility. So right now they're being smart and safe, the league making sure they're being conservative here so this doesn't continue to become a bigger problem. All right, that's outstanding work. Diana Rossini, again, the very latest. As of now, Tennessee-Pittsburgh still scheduled to be played, but there are discussions going on with the Players Association and the league and everyone else involved, and uh, the option of postponement remains on the table. Diana, while I have you, and I hate to make an abrupt, as abrupt a, a change as this, but there is one thing that I need to say to you at this moment. And that thing <laughs> is congratulations for those who did not see it, Diana Rossini got married this past weekend. Congrat, my most heartfelt from Stacy and me and everyone, my most heartfelt congratulations to you. We could not be more delighted for you. Thank you so much, Greeny. I actually thought of you uh, at our dinner because I had to make a toast and I was thinking the best person on the planet at toast is Mike Greenberg. Why didn't I invite him? So I made a really big party foul there by not having you. But maybe maybe when I have another wedding, not that I'm getting a divorce, we just decided <laughs> to put off the big party. Uh, maybe for that one, you can come. So fingers crossed we make it to 2022 for the big one, and you'll be there. I'm glad that you clarified that, because the other way to mean that would be, listen, so the <laughs> next time I get married, Greeny, the, the, my, there's no question I would love to have you speak. Well, but I would be honored to. I would be honored to attend. I'm an excellent guest. Um, and, and all kidding aside, uh, you know we love you, and it is it is just wonderful to see you in this in this very happy place. So congratulations, Diana. Thank you so much. I'll see you Friday on Get Up. Okay, look forward to that. But actually, check back in here in the next two hours if there's any further news on this. And Diana, non-foggy face shield, which is very nice. Dialing up the perfect game <sighs> plan. What stuck out to you about the positions Reed puts Mahomes and the Chiefs' offense in? I just love him. <laughs> I love him so much. I mean, how can you not? Andy Reid is 62 years old. Any coach is like he's 32, right? Because a lot of too many coaches and coordinators around the NFL would say, okay, I've got the most talented thrower in football. I've got one of the best skill groups, great offensive line. I'm going to sit back on my laurels and let them win their one-on-ones, but not Andy Reid. I, I, I was giggling, honestly, last night at some of the shenanigans he was pulling fully in his bag. I mean, look, look at that play, right? Right? Tyree Kill comes on the field. Mahomes rolls right. Defense rolls right. So, of course, a shovel pass to the fullback. Well, I've never even seen this. He stacked four wide receivers. What? 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 I, it was just I, at one point he had a, a reverse throwback on a wildcat. Oh, of course, yes, other teams leak their tight ends. He's going to leak his tackle. I, I just, it's the innovation.
revelation from him and Eric Bieniemy, who should be a head coach in the NFL, that awes me week after week. And then when you combine that innovation with a quarterback who can execute every last bit of it, I don't know how you stop it, to Marcus's point. Yeah, I mean, last night is a perfect example. Like, Andy Reid earned his paycheck. You know, when you play in games like that, your coach has got to earn their paycheck, and he did last night. Can we show up, Andy Reid? It's so much fun watching Russell Wilson so far this season. And, Mina, it really has been fun for you. His hot start is approaching historic levels. What stands out to you? I mean, what doesn't stand out to me? I, consider this incredible statistic. I'm going to give you a few of them. So far this season, Russell Wilson has thrown 14 touchdowns. That's as many as the rest of the NFC West combined, Laura. And it's in part because the Seahawks are finally living up to their name and attacking through the air. Well, the Seahawks isn't a real bird, but if it was, it would be attacking through the air. Uh, Brian Schottenheimer has unleashed him on early downs, passing the football the most in the league. It's been spectacular. Look at this one, three for 30, three for three, rather. That's a lot better than three for 30 on 40 plus air yard passes. Uh, many of those to DK Metcalf. Turns out it's a good idea to draft a gigantic receiver if you have a quarterback with the prettiest deep ball in the NFL. Perfect match of quarterback and receiver there. This one really jumps out. Russell Wilson spent the longest time in the pocket of any quarterback and that is a testament not only to his subtle movement ability to evade rushers but also the Seahawks offensive line which is not something you hear a lot every day currently ranks fifth in ESPN's pass block win rate metric. Again, fifth very unusual for that Seattle offensive line. They've been playing much better than previous seasons. If they can keep that up, Wilson will be on his way to an MVP award. Let's go. You know, he's never even gotten a vote. That's crazy look to how, me. Look, hey, look how happy she is when she, she talks it, about it. We're so happy about it, too. I have to just say something. Mina, you know, while you were going, Dan was so caught up on you saying that a Seahawks not a real bird that I think he missed no idea. the last two great stats that you had. <laughs> so just to confirm, a Seahawk is not a real bird. No clue. Fictional, totally fictional. Yeah, I guess kinda, it's like an osprey, but not a real bird. That's Lord, disappointing because when you, you go play it? there, when you go play there <laughs> and they start their game, like they have a hawk come out low right yeah. through the tunnel before the team goes. I always thought it was a Seahawk. Can you it's proceed a Seahawk. To... Yeah, we're going to carry on, but we just had to have that moment there for Dan Orlovsky. <laughs> Mina, Mina sometimes, the, sometimes you accentuate our dumbness and it's not fair. It's not fair. All it's, right, it's we're going to give you a chance to be I, smart right now, Marcus. I thought, I thought